What's up, Tommy? Boy, oh boy, we are looking a lot better now, man. We are in business now. Woo! I'll tell you what, man. This was a long time coming. This right here was a long time coming, okay? Uh, this needed to happen, man. This needed to happen. We're about to start being able to set up OBS. Um, so we're going to have overlays on the stream. This is this is the next level right here, man. This is what makes or breaks YouTubers right here, okay? Yeah, Josh looked out all the way. He helped me out with the webcam. I went out and bought a new laptop, man, saved up. Um, and I and actually a, a friend of mine, Jose, I don't know if you're watching, bro, but you need a shout out, man, because he came in with an unbeatable fucking price for this PC. All right, this is a very, very nice PC, man. Um, and and he, he gave it to me for a steal, dude, a fucking steal. Um, yeah, man, absolutely unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, so we're going to be showing off the tattoo in this video. Uh, we're going to have a part two coming for that. Uh, we do have some bad news, man, but, you know, we're focusing on the good side today, man. I will talk about that shit in another fucking video. Now ain't the time. Now is not the time. Now, I know everybody is very anxious to see the tattoo, all right, and hear the plans that we have coming for it. I am in kind of a, a low chair. I need to probably I might get a different chair. I don't know. This is comfortable. Anyway, um, yeah, man. Uh, the tattoo. So I'm going to show it when we get to 50 people in here. All right. Up close. How Josh did. You guys have already seen the video. You know how it looks. But, um, we do have more plans. All right. This is not done. This is, you guys have seen part one. Part two is on the way and it's coming and it's going to be glorious. All right. Um, God, what else was I going to say? I don't know. We got a lot to talk about, man. I'm super happy. There's a lot that I have ready for this beautiful quality in the streams. Oh, I know. I mean, you can see into the tanks now. There's no blurry, grainy bullshit. Um, this is where it's at right here, man. This is where it's at. Yeah, smack that like button if you like the new uh, the new setup, man. Um, it wasn't cheap. It wasn't cheap at all. But uh, but yeah, man. Fuck it. I'll show off the tattoo now. So here's what your boy did, man. It's looking pretty fucking good, too. So what I'm thinking is, is we're going to take this black right here, and we're going to bring it up. All the way around kind of the edge around the outside. All the way up into around this region here. And I think it's going to be awesome. I think it's going to be awesome. Silence of the Lambs. You already know. You already know. Just did a huge upgrade. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this this was nice. No red, no scarring. Yeah. Yeah. Um, It sucked because I had to work the next day. And it was just blazing. It felt like it was on fire the entire day, but uh, but it was nice, you know. Um, it came out good. It's feeling better now. It still still hurts a little bit, but it, it it's not bad. It really wasn't bad when I got it either. Um, the only part that kind of sucked was right on in this region here. That that didn't tickle, um, but it wasn't bad. It wasn't nearly as bad as the damn chest piece getting this done. That that hurt. I don't say tattoos hurt. That hurt. Josh is a talented tattoo artist. He really is. I, you know, and uh, we and him talked about it. I think he's just going to do the rest of my tattoos. The rest of the tattoos that I'm going to get are going to be through him. Um, you know, I like to stick to one artist. He has a common theme. As you guys can, you could probably tell, you know what I mean? That the shading work is, is, is pretty identical. If you know, if you know where you're looking at, uh, the shading work is identical between the tattoos that he's done. Um, and I like to keep that theme because I, I enjoy the shading work that he does. It looks really good. But yeah, man, we got to shout out my boy Manny too. I am sitting at the at the store today, and I looked down at my phone, and Manny came in with twenty bucks on Cash App, bro, for no reason. It was awesome. It really made my day. So shout out to you, Manny. I really appreciate that, man. It's helping out more than more than I can talk about right now. It really is. Thank you so much for that, man. I don't know if you're in here, but when you come back and we watch the stream, you got shout out, man. I really appreciate it. What's up, Felicia? So we did some snake feedings today. I had to go and uh, man, I'll probably turn it. I don't know because I'm liking I'm liking the back right there. It's looking too bright though. But this over here is looking looking mighty fine if I do say so myself. But yeah, man. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to show off the rest. Oh, you guys can kind of see the Cheetos there. 
<laughs> Give me one sec. I'm going to see if I can find a better chair. Um... Let me see if this one looks a little bit better. Uh. So my plans now, I'm going to start talking about, I guess, what I'm going to do from here. Yeah, this is a lot better. I like this. Okay. Uh, I want to do some gaming streams, man. I, I'm able to have a face cam on now. Uh, I think that'll be really, really helpful. Uh, plus, you know, I can give you guys notifications. A lot of people don't get notifications for the gaming streams. Um, but yeah. Your place looks very warm and inviting. It is. It is a very warm and inviting place. Um, also, an amazing spot if you smoke, which I don't. But but if you were to come in here and smoke, this would be an amazing spot to do it, wouldn't you say? I don't know. It might just be me. Been here since the beginning. Yes, you have, Kobe. You've been here a long time. You know, a lot of people, man, if you go back and look at some of the videos I did, man, I don't know if you guys remember in, in my mom's garage is where everything started with the shitty Chromebook computer that was given to me for free. And and we started with with horrible shit audio, grainy, terrible, just just god awful quality cameras. And you know, and with the help of mainly Josh, I give you know Josh props for fucking everything, man. Like I, you know. I met his parents this weekend. Um, you know, it wasn't like we were all having to get together or anything, but I came out, I was, you know, as the tattoo was done, I saw his parents um, in the driveway, you know, and I said hi to him. And uh, and he's got a, he's got an amazing family, man. He really does. And, and dude, I, I really just, like I said, I had to tell his parents, I, your son is, is fucking amazing. Seriously, I don't know where I would be without Josh. And, and I know it sounds like, you know, I'm not trying to dick ride the dude or anything like that. But I got to give props, you know, give respect where respect is due. And, and you know, honestly, I don't know why he's done all this, man. I really don't. But all I can say is thank you, man. You know, and, and truly, I feel like he is a blessing in my life, man. I really do feel like that. Uh, I don't think I talk about it enough. But, man, I tell you what, I mean, I, the, the percent that I would be in prison or in jail, I feel like is a lot higher without that. Because this is giving me an outlet to talk to people, to help other people. Um, and to kind of, I don't know, I guess stay on the right path because it's not just me and this journey anymore, man. We've got beautiful people who tune in every time, you know what I mean? Who hop in every single stream and, you know, and, and chat with everybody, you know, it's not just about me. It's, it's, this is a bigger thing, man. This, this whole FPS shit is bigger than me. So I got to stay out of trouble. I'm doing my part. Um, yeah. And that's the way, how I find a lot of you guys, man. So seriously, man, shout out to Josh, dude. I don't know. Uh, if he's here, but, but yeah, that dude is, is, is a blessing. I, I'm serious, man. I don't know any other YouTuber that does shit like that. Super awesome dude. And you know, all I can do, he doesn't, you know, there's not really a whole lot I can give him back. And, uh, and I'm somebody, I've had this problem my whole life, man. When somebody does something for me, I feel like I owe that person. And I told him you ever need anything, I'm here. But I guess what I, what I will plan on doing, and I've said this from the very beginning, from the very fucking beginning in the garage with the grainy fucking quality from the very beginning, I said that if I got big and things start going good on YouTube, you know, I'm going to hand it down to the next person. I'm going to pass it on to somebody I truly believe can do something uh, to make a positive change. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. And, you know, I've met a lot of people that I truly feel can do that. And as soon as I get into a position where I'm able to start helping other people like he has helped me, best believe that is the first thing I'm going to do been here since 600 subs that's crazy that's crazy yeah you know i i started my youtube channel started off with 86 subs over nine years i gained 86 subs now, i wasn't posting every day i wasn't really trying i think there was one month where i made every video on my channel and then uh and then i just added a few climbing videos from then on but most of it had copyright music and and it was done with a, a shitty video editing app on your phone. I mean, man, so I had to delete everything and start new. And uh, and I'm glad I did, man. I really am. But besides that, 
Uh, like I said, we're going to get OBS set up. I don't know if you guys are all familiar with what OBS is. Um, it helps you do stream overlays, uh, you know, a lot of different things. Man, there's a lot that we can start doing. I can get Nightbot in here, start doing better giveaways. There, there's so much, you know, right now I understand on the receiving end, it just looks like new computer and and a new video. And, and I understand that. But you got to look at the vision here. You got to look at the FPS vision here, right? <laughs> it's so corny. But uh, there's so much you can do with, with a computer where I can download programs. With the Chromebook, you can't download shit. So I will keep my promise to you guys. We are taking this fucking computer and I'm smashing this fucking thing. All right? I am smashing this shit. Or I'll do a, <laughs> or I'll do a giveaway. All right? Now this, I am going to not send through the American Postal Service. Um, I'm going to send this through UPS or some other private something. I'm not having this get lost. So, but yeah, no, I, it would be a treat for me if I could just smash this fucking, all the stress this thing has caused me, man. Um, all the headaches and, and just what the fuck moments that this thing has brought into existence, man. Um, I couldn't even tell you. I, I couldn't even begin to explain. So if somebody needs a laptop, I will format this laptop and give it to them because smashing it would definitely be a waste. It would be more fun for me, but there are people who don't have a laptop and, you know, people who are streaming, <laughs> people who are watching the streams from their phone. I'm sorry, Josh, you kind of cracked me up with that one. I've been here since six minutes ago. Mod me. <laughs> I'll tell you what, bro. Come to the next stream. I swear I'll mod you. That shit was funny. What laptop did you end up getting? So it's nothing like super duper high-end. It's not an Alienware or an Ironside, but it's an Asus. It has uh, an i5 core processor. I think right now they only have i8 out right now. Don't quote me on that. They might have an i10. I don't, I don't know. But this is not bad, all right? This is not bad at all. Do you not like color tattoos? No, I don't. I do not like color tattoos. My bed, uh, it's in this region over here. I'm not going to show it uh, because I just I just still have boxes and stuff over here, and I don't, I'm not ready to show that. I mean, I can. It's not that big of a deal, but but yeah, man. Sometimes everything is not as it seems. That's very true. It's very true. <laughs> Josh, that shit was funny. Oh man, glad you're doing good. I'm doing all right. I do have to find another job. The hours are not looking right anymore, um, and I'm, I'm not making enough money. So I am going to be finding another job. I'm still working, though. I'm not going to quit until I find something else. But, but yeah. Another thing I'm doing, man, I'm starting to get, you know, I'm trying to be a little bit healthier. I uh, I don't eat as well as I should. You know, I, I, I binge a bunch of fucking shit food and popcorn, so... I bought a couple of uh, body cleansing drinks, okay? And this one, I've been drinking a few days now, in particular, is fucking amazing, all right? I've never had any detox drink that tastes good, but this shit right here, it tastes like coconut and pineapple, man. Super good. Am I a vegan now? <laughs> I like women. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm not a vegan, man. No, I'm not. Um, I, I, I respect people who do. I make fun of them because I can't be a vegan, but there's no way I could be a vegan. I like tacos and, and shit food too much, but much respect to people who have that mental capacity needed to be able to do that. I don't have that kind of willpower. Oh, all right, Crystal, take it easy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You got my old address. Cool, dude. We've been through that shit before. I'm still going to get you out of here, though. That's hilarious. Bro, I don't understand that. Why? My old address must be on fucking white pages or something. I don't know. It's nice, though, because look. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much, Spartan. Give me one second. I'm going to address that. Hold on. So the reason people think they have my address, when you search my name or... Um, probably go find my mom's name or some shit. Uh, her name's a whitelisted from fucking everything. But the place I'm at now, I'm not, this goes for you, the troll who's in here thinking you fucking got me. I'm not under a lease here. So, you know what I mean? There's no contract signing. I could pick up all my shit and move out tomorrow if I wanted to. There's nothing binding me here. 
Therefore, my name is not on white pages or anything. This is about as down low, low key as you can get. So, you know, husky lover. Bro, you really think that's going to fucking piss me off, dude? <laughs> hey, man, I've had that thought, too. He ain't fucking with me, chief. I mentor a lot of people in Texas and around the world to pay it forward by working hard, living your best life, and share your blessings. Thank you so much. Off the grid. Yeah, for sure. I got to be. I got to be. It's just one person who's got, like, several different accounts, man. <laughs> don't even give him attention, bro. I really don't care. I'm telling you, I, I just don't. I couldn't care less. People who hop in here, look, if things like that bothered me, I could not be doing YouTube. You know what I mean? And I wouldn't ever give you guys information that, if thrown back my way, would offend me. You know what I mean? I'm not going to give people ammunition to shoot at me with. It's not fucking happening. So when I come in and I talk about, you know, my dad and shit that's happened with that, it's stuff that's all in the past. It's over with. You know what I mean? I'm never going to give somebody ammunition to, to, to hurt me. It's not happening. So... When people hop in here thinking, man, I got him with this fuck-ass comment. Oh, well, good luck, Charlie. Seen a lot worse. I've been told a lot worse. Now you come to my house and that shit in person. It's a little bit different. Everyone's tough over the internet, though, so I'll let it slide. <laughs> Did you read any of the Jeffrey Epstein news? I haven't. I meant to look into it. I know something about somebody getting arrested. I didn't look at the whole thing, so I don't want to start speaking on it. And I don't know what I'm talking about. So I'll, let me come back to that. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna do some research tonight on it. And figure out how that whole situation is going down. And then I'll formulate an opinion. What's up, Joey Lee Houston? K-pop, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Nah, some kids are children, man. It is what it is. Internet thugs. I'm Like I said, man, I'm not even tripping a little bit. You're in a mood tonight? <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. I'm not worried about any of that shit. But my thing is, like, nobody – I have neighbors at my old address that, like, if somebody pulled up on some crazy shit, I don't know if they'd call me because, like, I still I don't really know them like that. But they wouldn't be – they wouldn't fuck around. You know what I mean? I don't know. Pull up to that address. Ring the doorbell. See who you get. I don't know. Maybe I'll take a trip over to the address. People keep posting and show you guys I don't fucking live there. <laughs> oh, man. Live your life. What's up, man? Bro, when are you going to make another song? So I can actually – play the song now because my whole channel has been whitelisted meaning i am allowed to play that song whenever i don't own the rights to the song but my channel will never get a copyright strike for playing that song um which is awesome which is really good so during videos i might put the song in there my thing is though i'm only going to use it for one video maybe a year because i don't want to overdo you know that song i don't want it to be played out you know i want that to be damn i remember that song so that's what i'll do and I'm thinking about making more music. I don't really know what direction I want to go in with it, though. Um, I'm starting to hang out with a lot more artists, though. Really SoundCloud rappers. Um, but a lot more artists, I guess. You know, they're considered artists, too. Uh, and so, yeah. I'm thinking that, you know, maybe we start doing uh, more music. But we'll see. I don't want to be a rapper. I have no desire to be a rapper. Um, you know, it's not something that... If I dropped a song and it did really good... I wouldn't ever sign a record deal. I, I don't want any of that. I think it's just fun to put music out, and if people like it, good on them. If they don't, I'll play it by myself. <laughs> Battle raps between you, Mike, and Death. I don't know if Josh would be down for that. I know Mike would be. Um, I'll talk to Josh. Though. That would be a pretty fucking funny video. Thank you so much for that donation, though, Spartan. Really, thank you so much. Place looking super dope. Thank you so much, Dad. Yeah, man. Um... Finally got everything set up, and it's looking really good. It's looking really good. Can we get a conspiracy stream? Yeah, we might need to. There's probably a lot more that have come out now that, uh, because I don't think I've done one since last year. I don't know. It might have been early this year. We'll see. But we'll definitely do more of those. Those are a lot of fun. God, I need to get a haircut, man. I'm looking like, like shit. I might go do that today. What's in the tanks? So in this one, we have a jungle carpet python. Um... God, he is looking really stupid right now. So, look, you can actually see him with this camera, too. Hold on. <laughs> That's crazy. This right here is his head. <laughs> I'll take, uh, I don't know. He just ate today. Um, but, yeah, we got a, or not a jungle carpet. I'm sorry, a caramel carpet python. And then over here, we have Arnold. 
I got another tank over here. Um, what's another python? You meant rap career? Yeah, I don't want a rap career. Do you have AC and heat in there? Uh, I do have AC, and I do have – well, I have floor heat. I don't have, like, a heat – you know what I mean? Something that provides heat to the whole place. I'll probably have to go buy that. Thank you so much. Live your life. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, it came out really good. You heard how UFOs are actually people from the future. I believe it. That's not a crazy theory. Um, I think that uh, that maybe, you know, something horrible happens and people live underground or, you know, I don't know. I believe history repeats itself. You see it a lot. Passed away Friday. Oh, my God, dude. I can't even imagine. That's – okay, this is going to sound bad, but – when we, if you like snakes and a snake dies, that's a lot worse than sometimes a dog or a cat or a hamster or anything like that. Because you got to understand, they live, you know what I mean, decades. They live decades. I'm talking 20, 30 years. And, you know, when you have them for 20, 30 years and they die, that's like losing a best friend. That's like losing a, that, that sucks, man. I, I don't even know how to, how it, you know, how to help with that. That's crazy. Man, I'm sorry to hear that. That's terrible. Overloaded with pythons in Florida. Oh, yeah, the Everglades have a terrible python problem. Because in the 80s and 90s, everybody thought it was cool to own snakes, so they would get what's called Burmese pythons or reticulated pythons. And these snakes get bigger than fucking school buses. I'm talking easily get 20 foot long. You see some that are 30 foot long. Um, and so they just went and released them into the Everglades. And now you have a problem where all the mammal population is down, these things are starting to eat alligators and crocodiles, and it is not good. It is not good at all. They've taken over that whole fucking area down there. How much you pay for your new place? Um, I pay about six hundred a month. About six hundred. So it's not too bad. It's not too bad. I don't pay, and it's nice because I don't pay for any utilities. All utilities are included in this place, which is absolutely amazing. Because the electric bill, believe it or not, for those uh, heat lamps can actually run you up a little bit. Um, not, it's not going to be hundreds of dollars, but it'll run you up a good 50, 60 bucks every month just with the heat lamps. Um, that's what I was told. I, I don't know. Don't quote me on that. But I know it does run you up some money. Iguanas too. Oh, my God. Damn, ghost. Are you planning on getting any more, man? Would you ever get anything else? 600 a month, what state? Uh, I'm in Virginia, man. I don't mind saying that. I'm in Virginia. Virginia Beach. Come down and say hi, man. If you guys are ever in the area and I'm streaming, let me know. Let me know. I do like meeting people, man. What do you think about Epstein? I Like I said, I haven't read enough about it to formulate um, an educated opinion. So let me go and look back at that, review some facts, figure out everything that's going on. And next stream, I'll have something to talk about about that. I don't think I forgot the... um. Damn, the uh, six-hour live stream or 12-hour live stream. Uh, I could probably do that Friday if that works out for everybody. Um, so we can plan on Friday. Friday night, if that's cool with everybody, it's probably what we'll do. I might have some friends come by during that time. So, you know, uh, you'll be able to meet a good buddy of mine, Jose, who actually helped me get the fucking computer. Great guy, man. Um, and actually, now this is funny. If any of you guys speak Spanish, I need a little bit of help. Because when I first got this, he bought this computer in Spain, all right? So as soon as he gave it to me, I turn it on, and the whole thing's in, in not Mexico Spanish, but Spain Spanish. They're a little different. Uh, and I couldn't understand fucking anything. So I'm sitting here trying to figure everything out, and I, I'm FaceTiming him, and he's talking in Spanish. I have no idea what the hell he's saying. And, uh, dude, it, it was so toxic. It took me about an hour and a half to download the English and then get it reset. Dude, it was so annoying. It was stupid annoying. And, and even still, there's certain boxes that I click on, and, and it's still in Spanish. So I don't know what to do. It's super toxic, but I'll get it figured out, I guess. Probably going to give my nephew a snake with my setup. Okay, what size tank did you have for it, Ghost? I don't know what, uh, what size tank a fully grown ball python would need. That quality. Yeah, Hercules. What do you think, brother? What do you think? Yeah, man. I, I'm super, super happy. 20 gallon, okay. That right there is a 75 or 80 gallon. 
And uh, and it's really way too way too big for the snake that's in there. I'm gonna actually take him out and move him because he looks like he is in there breaking his neck. Now he just ate. After they eat, you don't really want to handle them because um, they can regurgitate their food if they get stressed. But I'm not gonna leave him looking stupid either. You know that's my boy. I got, <laughs> I got two liters of Pepsi and shit to weigh it down. <laughs> Come say hi, buddy. Go be that. Come on. All right, dude. He's not feeling it, man. He's not feeling it even a little bit. You can probably see him up there climbing. Oh. Yeah, he is not feeling that at all, guys. I tried to get him out, and he is just wrapping around shit. He is not fucking feeling it. I don't know. Can you see him? Oh, dude, he's right across the top up there. It's kind of hard to see him. He blends in really fucking well. You got to have good eyes to see that. But if you look right here, there he is all along down there. Yeah, super cool snake, man. I just fed him today and he took that shit so quick. I might need to start feeding him more, actually. You're holding your python. Oh, my God. Lowell's, you got me. <laughs> oh, that's stupid. Oh, man. Yeah, man, if you touch a snake and then don't wash your hands uh, and eat, can you get sick? I'm sure you could. I'm, I mean, you know, especially if there's one in nature um, out in the wild. Uh, if you get bit, they, you can, they can transfer parasites and things like that, uh, diseases, infections, all that good stuff. Um, but, yeah, I'm sure you can get sick off the of touch of any animal and then eating. I'm sure you know it's possible, at least. Losing weight, bro. I'm trying to, man. I'm not fat or anything by any definition of the word, but I could definitely, you know, shave a few pounds in areas. All right, bro, I need to get a haircut. This is unacceptable right here. Unacceptable. When are you going to make a YouTube video? So I got something lined up. Tell me if you guys want to see it, man, because I went out to a natural refuge, uh, a refuge wildlife park or whatever you want to call it, and... Um, I was looking for snakes the whole time, so the damn camera's looking at the ground, man, and I, I'm not happy with that. I, I want to go out and reshoot the video um, and just redo it because right now I only have – the video is 14 minutes long, you know, and, but I'm just going to cut it down to probably six or seven minutes. And for YouTube, for me to get paid, I have to make it 10 minutes, but I'm not going to do that. Like, I, I'm not going to force feed fucking bullshit content at you guys. I, w I don't want to see that. You know what I mean? I wouldn't be happy with that. Uh, so I'm just going to shave out all the parts. And if it's not 10 minutes, fuck it. Oh, well, it is what it is. I'd rather put out a good video that I'm proud of making, um, you know, versus a shit video that I'm just making $7 off of. I'm not doing that. So I, I, I don't know. I can probably get that uploaded um, within like the next couple of days for sure. Because I, I video is long overdue. I've just been doing hella live streams. You look like you've lost weight. Well, I appreciate it, man. I'm not in Chicago anymore, Danny. I think we've talked about this shit, too. I think every time you come in here, you ask me where I was from. And I tell you every time. About 10 minutes away from the university. <laughs> what do you think about the snakeskin wallets? Um, does having a snake change how you view such items? Actually, believe it or not, it does. Because, look, I got a picture of me when I was in uh, Michigan with a snake. I don't even think it was venomous, man. And, and my uncle cut the head off with a shovel, right? And, and I'm like, oh, yeah, get that son of a bitch. And now that I have them and I understand what kind of creatures they are, it definitely changes how you feel. You know what I mean? It'd be like if somebody took a dog, skinned a dog, and then hung it on the wall. Well, if you didn't have dogs or, you know, if they weren't domesticated, it'd be like, oh, that, that's, you know, that's dope. You're a hunter. But otherwise, you know, now you look like a fucking psychopath. You know what I mean? So I think it definitely changes things. That's a good question, too, man. Remember the N64? I never had a Nintendo 64, man. 
I had a Game Boy Advance and uh, a few other things like that, but I live about 100 west of Chicago. Oh, right on, right on. Hell yeah, man, Illinois in the house. Matter of fact, dude, that dude that uh, not a lot of you guys liked, Lionel, um, me and him were born in the same hospital in Chicago. So what I'll do is I'll have him come over, and he can tell you where both of us are from. So you don't got to hear it from me because, you know, I don't know. Y'all, y'all can believe whatever the fuck y'all want. But me and him were born two hospital rooms apart from each other in Chicago. And we still are best friends to this day, and we both live in Virginia now. That shit is so crazy to me, man. That shit blows my mind. It really does. Death hooked it up with the hand tat. Which hand is it on? Uh, left. Yeah, it's on my left hand. Yep. I mean, and it looks good. I think the only problem is, man, is it's going to be hard to blend this with this because it's two different types of ink. Um, and this is an older tat, too. So I don't know. I'm very interested to see how that comes out. I still want them to do it, but I'm I'm a little nervous about it, man. I don't know. Well, I'm going to have to see how it comes out. What? You did get it uh, in your hand. I thought you were against it. I thought I was, too. And then I was like, screw that. I want a hand tattoo. I don't know. Oh, heist and blue. What do you know about Cicada 3301? I don't think we've ever fucking talked about that. I don't think we've ever talked about Cicada 3301. What do you know about that? I've never seen her name in here. I'm very impressed. To, to know about Cicada 3301, you either watch a lot of YouTube, a lot of conspiracy theories, or you, you were involved with it. And at one point... I was going around geocaching looking for some of the shit that they put out. Um, but I was not near smart enough for what they were looking for. And I have no idea what they're involved in. I have no idea what they're looking for. But they, Cicada 3301, for those who don't understand, um, was pretty much a secret group uh, that made a post, right? They made a post one day and it had this on it. It was just that image said cicada or all i didn't even say cicada just at 3301 um and it released a post saying we are looking for the greatest enlightened minds of our of our time okay it said we are going to put out a series of puzzles and a series of riddles and geocaches around the globe that you have to go to pick up the clues and then figure out and and we'll know when you figured it out and i mean a lot of this man a lot of the stuff that they had was like cryptology um decoding and deciphering ancient languages uh modern technology dealing with certain pixels and how pixels were formulated i mean dude this is some next level shit you don't just you know i mean this isn't something you learn with a master's degree in college you have to study very certain particular fields to be able to decipher a lot of the puzzles that they had um and and i i attempted it but dude the, you're the people they're looking for, their mind doesn't doesn't operate the same way you, our minds operate, um, and and you know that shit blew my mind, man. Um, and I believe they found everybody that they're looking for because they've been real radio silent lately. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a very very interesting topic. It's a very very interesting topic. What caused you to become a Christian? Um, proof, proof caused me to become a Christian and now it's faith, but, um, I'll tell you my story. All right. I, like I said, I don't talk about religion a whole lot, but I do talk about religion. I won't talk about politics, but this is back when I was in jail. Um, 18 years old, I was facing 30 years. Um, you know, before I made bond, this is before I had bond. This is, you know, and if I never would have made that bond, I would have been sitting in that jail cell for a year and a half. All right, I would have just got out like six months ago. So I'm sitting in that jail cell, and you know, I see I, one of the my cellies, uh, not one of my cellies, the guy who was next to me. His, his name was Mike, uh, Michael, and he ran prayer group every night. And at first, I was like, "Fuck that prayer group sounds stupid as shit. It sounds like a waste of time. I'd rather sit up and eat food and 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 fucking read or watch TV. It sounds like a waste of time." And you know, uh, I, I really, I genuinely thought it was at the time I still practiced black magic. Um, and I was still very, very involved with hoodoo. And, uh, I wouldn't say so much Santeria. Um, I knew of Santeria, but I never really 
dove into it as much as uh as much as you know black magic uh and voodoo and uh, a few other different types of magic or the occult i guess witchcraft however you want to call it um and i go into michael's cell one day and he goes do you know about god i said yeah i fucking know who god why you know why, why are you talking to me about this and he goes well he said, I don't know. He said, you have a real weird energy about you. He said, I, has anybody ever talked to you about it? And I left the cell. He said, I'm not interested. I said, I, I didn't come here um, to uh, to be involved with the church. I didn't come here for any of that shit. I came here to do my time and go the fuck home. And, and, and we didn't talk again for a while. And then one day, I'm starving, right? I am so fucking hungry. And, and you can tell who's trying to grease you up. Like, he wasn't leaving Jolly Ranchers on my bed, all right? different guy <laughs> but i'm sitting out there i'm starving I got my head down don't feel good i'm i'm hungry and he comes up and goes hey man what's going on I said nothing man so what's up he was like do you need something man he said i i have a lot of extra shit he said if you need something it's no problem I said dude so i'm just hungry man i said i used to eat whenever i want i come in here and and we get fed twice a day pretty much because the lunch ain't shit he goes all right man Here's a couple packs of ramen noodles. I was like, all right, man, thanks. I'll pay you back, you know what I mean, when I get commissary. He said, no, you're good. Keep it. And and right then, I knew something was, was, was off, was different about this guy. Because in jail, you keep what you have because you're starving. You're so fucking hungry. You know what I mean? You you are you sit up at night. I remember I would sit up at night eating fucking uh, ramen noodle seasoning just to pretend like I ate something. So I get the taste of pretending like I had some dinner. You know what I mean? Help me sleep. Um, and, you know, you, so you keep everything you have. So the fact that he was able to come down and and just give me some fucking food was unbelievable, and I didn't have to pay him back. So after that, I said, you know, we'll sit down and talk. We sat down. We talked. I told him what I was involved in. Hey, you don't you don't got to delete him. Whatever. He's, he's, entitled to his own, he's, he's entitled to his own opinion, man. If you don't want to, it's whatever. I don't give a shit about it. Man. Anyway, um, we sat down and we talked. And I told him what I was involved in. I told him I was I was not an active Satanist, but I did practice black magic. And it was something that I was involved in. It was something that um, that I enjoyed doing and that I saw results in. And he said, well, why have you ever tried being a Christian? I said, yeah, when I was a kid, I tried being a Christian. I said, <clears throat> that whole idea of faith, I said, I don't buy it. I said, I don't like the fact that I just have to close my eyes and believe in something with, with no results, with, with nothing. And he said, well, he said, maybe you just haven't tried long enough. He said, you haven't just show him that you are going to put an honest effort at it. And, and if you don't see any results, you know, in, in a month or two, he said, fuck it. Don't worry about it. I said, all right. I said, I'll do that. I said, you've done me a favor. I said, that's my way. I'll repay you back. Like I said, I've always had that mindset where if somebody does something for me, I need to do something for them. So in my mind, I was doing it for him and not myself. And I pretty much was like, all right, dude, you know what? Fuck it, I'll do it. So from that point on, um, I started doing prayer group or whatever, and I wasn't real involved at first. I didn't really talk. Uh, I, a couple of the other guys that were there, there was a guy from Brazil that was really cool. We talked about EDM and a bunch of other stuff. Um, and then the next main character in the story was a guy named Box. All right. Now, I haven't talked about this guy as much as I should because this is a, a, a fucking champion right here. If I ever saw him, I, I will pay Josh to get him on the fucking show. This guy has been shot four times with a 45 by the police. I mean, you, he lifted up his shirt, and you could see that this whole area in here was just, it was like a, a, a divot. It was like a whole just, uh, it was like somebody took a chunk right on out of everything down here. And he he had to lift up his shirt every day and put, like, this cream and this, like, this ointment on it so that it would heal. Um, it looked like somebody divided his chest. Uh, he got shot in the face and split his tongue down the middle and took his whole lower jaw off so he it was hard to understand him. Um, and he had a, a a razor mark. Somebody cut him with a razor on the top of his head. So this guy's been through the fucking works, man. This guy's been through the fucking work. Um, you know, and at first, I, I, I didn't know what to think about him. He was in there for murder. Um, he was in there with stage four cancer. Uh, and he was in his 30s. The guy looked like he was 60. His cancer was kicking his ass, man. And this guy had unwavering faith. This guy had faith that would change an atheist. I mean, seriously, I've never seen anything anything so powerful in my life. Um, you know, because 
a lot of us, man, we go through small things, you know, and, and I don't, I don't want to minimize minimize your problems or whatever, but you got to put into a perspective. We are, we're worried about money issues. We're worried about the next day, what, what's going to happen at work. Our friends We're worried about, he, this guy's worried about dying at any point with stage four cancer and being shot again. All right. You know what I mean? Different fucking problems. All right. Uh, and so for him to still have this faith, when people lose faith over way less, I thought was was incredible. And I hadn't seen that before. So that's one thing that really kind of turned me on to Christianity right there. And we didn't talk a whole lot at first. Um, but I started doing prayer group, like I said, with Michael and Box, a guy from Brazil, a few other guys in there. Um, and eventually, I started going to, to Michael Moore. And I said, look, man, I said, you mind sitting down with me and kind of interpreting some of this? Because the Bible, I don't know if, you know, a lot of us haven't really read it. You know, no shame in saying that. Um, but there's there's a lot to be left up into different interpretations. There's a lot of different meanings that you can gather from one line. Um, and so I asked for his opinion on it and, and he broke it down for me. So anyway, I'm sitting in there talking to him about my case and I'm facing 30 years. And I'm, he said, well, you're probably going to be doing time. He said, with the charges you have, you know, with at the time, strong arm or armed robber, he said, you're, you're going to be doing time for that. Um, he said, plus you have a possession with intent charge. He said, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. He said, it's going to suck. He said, it's not going to be fun. I was like, yeah, I, I, I gathered that much. <laughs> so he said, uh, you've got two chances for a bond here. He said, your first one, you're probably going to get shot down. Your second one, you're probably going to get shot down, but you have a better bet of, of, of a bond or a bail. I said, all right, man. So it comes down to it. And, you know, I was in there for uh, about a month and a half, two months, maybe. I think it was a month and a half. And um, so I go to my first case. And I had a, a public pretender. This guy was just starting, didn't know what the fuck he was doing. I don't know who dressed this guy in the morning. Somebody had to color code his closet or he would be fucking mixed match. This guy was a fucking idiot, man. So we go to my first uh, my first bond hearing. And my first one, I stayed up all night praying and wrote down a whole fucking front and back two-page letter that I was going to read the judge, a heartfelt fucking everything, talking about my life, what I was going through, the reasons why I wasn't going to use it as an, as an excuse, but these are what I was going through when I was doing this. And, you know, and so I go into the courtroom and my public pretender, I look at him and I said, I'm going to read this. And he goes, oh, no, you're not. He said, you sit down right there. I'll take care of this. I said, all right, do your job. So he, he does something where he, I, this is how I could tell he didn't know what the fuck he was doing, right? He starts trying to ask me questions in front of other people. Which leaves me open um, to, I can't remember the name, it's like cross-examination cross from the prosecutor. So now he's asking me questions on the stand, she can ask me questions. And that's not fucking good at a bond hearing, this isn't trial. So he's trying to, when he's doing this, all it's doing is giving more information to the judge, adding to my paperwork. So this guy had no idea what he was doing, man. He completely tried to just fuck me, man. So I was pissed, right? And if that wasn't bad enough, you know, I didn't get the bond enough said, you know what I mean? If you didn't gather that already, now, you know, the bond was out of the fucking question at this point. So I go back to jail and he goes, man, that was a tough one, huh? I said, dude, so what the fuck are you doing, man? I said, what, what did you go to TCC? Did you go to community college for this dude? I said, I can't have you. He was like, what do you mean? I said, dude, I said, appeal the paperwork and we'll talk. So you only have two days to appeal the paperwork. At this point, I'm calling my mom. I'm making frantic fucking calls to try to get me a lawyer, to try to have somebody take out a loan. You know, all you have in jail is your fucking word. You don't have material objects. You don't have money. You can't say, when I get out, I'll pay you back. You can't do any of that. You, you don't, you just have to, you just have to say that. You know what I mean? You have to say, look, I will, I'll, I'll do my best to repay you when I get out. That's all you can do. You can't do anything else. So I'm on the phone with my mom, friends, everybody, just trying to get enough money to pay for a lawyer. And, uh. And we get a lawyer who plays golf with the judges. He's not fucking cheap. This guy wants 10000 just to fucking look at my case. So my mom did it. She heard that this was the best guy around. And, and, and she, that's, you know, that's what she did. She got him. Uh, his name was Robusto. Slippo Robusto. So he comes in um, a day and a half after my first bond hearing. And he goes, did you want to appeal that last bond hearing? I said, yeah. He goes, well, your public pretender didn't put in the paperwork. He said, you would have lost your chance at a second bond here. 
And at this point, if I would have saw this fucking public pretender again, man, oh, I would have stomped his teeth in. I mean, just a mad, the sheer fucking balls on this guy for doing that shit, man. Unfucking believable. So he goes and puts in the appeal paperwork. My next court date comes up in like two and a half weeks. This whole time I'm freaking out because this is my last chance. Who knows how long I'll be in here, which would have been a year and a half. But at the time, who knows how long I'd be in here? You know, it could be, it could be a week. It could be two years, whenever they decide to give me a trial. Um, so we go in um, and we start talking. You know, he's telling me about what kind of what's going to happen in my case. And it gets down to the point where it's about three days until my next bond here. And this is where the Christianity stuff starts coming back. I, I'm, I'm freaking out. I'm talking to Box and I'm talking to Michael. And I'm like, man, I was like, you know, what judges do I need to look out for? He said, there's three judges you need to look out for. I'm not going to name them, but there's three judges around here that if you get them, they're hitting you with the book. They don't care. They, they just want every criminal locked up, and that's how it is. And, uh, and he said, if you get them, he said, Michael told me this. Michael said, if you get them, you need to appeal. He said, you, or you need to uh, continue your case. He said, because those guys will hit you with the book for sure. I was like, all right. So it comes down to it. I'm going down to the bullpen, which is pretty much where they hold everybody right before you go into court. And actually, this has a little connecting piece here. If you guys remember that that video I did, Friends with Murderers, where I grew up with guys that ended up shooting like six different fucking people. I met up with one of them while I'm in the bullpen waiting to go to trial. He's in there facing 25 years, and that's his plea deal. His plea deal is if he pleads guilty, they'll give him 25 years, and that's the best he's got. And he's thinking, I'm just going to kill myself. I talked to him, and I couldn't believe it. So that helped me out a little bit. But it comes down to it. The security guard or the officer comes in. I'm like, hey, who's my judge? He goes, you got so-and-so. The worst fucking one. I'm just going to name, name him. His name's Lily. Guy's a fucking dick, dude. And uh, and, I, and I'm in there with Box. You know what I mean? And and I, I tell him, I said, dude, I said, I got to get this continued. I said, I'm, I'm going to be fucked. I said, I'm no way I'll get bond. He looked at me and he said, you've come this far. Have faith. And, and, yo, that shit almost brought me to – it brings me almost to tears now thinking about it. You know what I mean? Just because of how much he's been through. You know what I mean? Stage four cancer, being shot in the fucking face, uh, family giving up on him. Nobody cares about – you know what I mean? So for him to look at me and say, you've come this far, keep your faith. It, it, dude, it almost brings me to tears now. But um, – so, yeah, man, pretty much – uh, we, we keep going and I'm like, all right, I said, I'm going to go in and I'm just going to, I'm going to hope for the best. And by this time I had prayed, I had been fasting. I didn't eat or drink water for two days. All right. I'm sitting in there starving. My stomach's rumbling. I'm, I feel like shit. And, and I prayed. I said, look, I said, God, I said, I don't do this much. I said, we haven't had a whole lot of conversation. We haven't politicked a whole lot, uh, you know, on my, on my 18 years of, of existing. I said, but if you get me out of this, I said, I'll do three things. I said, I will start going to church. I will convert to being a Christian. Um, or not, not I, obviously I'd have been a Christian. Uh, what was the other one? I, before I go into my house, I will walk around an hour in the woods and thank God for, for the, the creation that you've made. And then the third one was that I was going to get somebody else, you know what I mean? Somebody who I cared about to just look into Christianity. And, and I said, if, if you can get me out of this, if you give me a bond, I said, I will make sure I do those three things. So it comes down to it. I'm going into the courtroom. I can't even fucking walk, dude. I can't talk. I can't. I'm shaking, bro. I am like, I'm more nervous than I've ever been in my entire life about anything. I mean, seriously, like I'm, my hands are, are trembling. I'm terrified. My whole, there is no feeling like that. The only other feeling I will ever say that, that is remotely similar is somebody having a gun to your face because your whole life, your whole future is in someone else's hands. It may not be a trigger, but it's a damn gavel. And at those, and, and at that time, it, it might as well be the same fucking thing. So uh, I go in and, you know, this whole time I'm praying, I see my mom and, and she's crying. She's got tears in her eyes saying she loves me. And I look back and say, you know what I mean? I turn around and said, I love you. Security guard pushed me forward like a fucking cock. I'm sorry, man. I'm getting... I, this is crazy, man. I'm, I don't relive this, this this fucking memory much, man. But so I'm going in there. I stand up. I sit down. My lawyer's not there yet. He comes in. He's like, all right. He said, we're going to be good. We got this. I said, this is the worst judge. I said, what do you mean we got this? He said, you got this. 
And my whole time I'm thinking what Rock told me, man, or what Box told me, he said, keep your faith, man. He said, you've come this far. Don't doubt him. He said, at the end of the day, that is not the judge with the final say. He said, the judge with the final say is overseeing everything, and he'll decide what happens. I said, all right, man. So I'm just thinking about this. It's replaying through my head like a fucking CD, man. And, uh, and, and you know, the judge asked me a few questions. I, I wish I could tell you what, what he asked me, what I said. I couldn't. I, I have no idea. I can't remember. Um, I was just too petrified. I can't remember what he asked me. Um, but at the end of the case, he stands up when he's about to make his, you know, make his fucking decision. And he goes, I feel like you are a, are a good kid, but you made a shit decision and you have to live with your consequences. And at this point I'm about to break down in tears. Cause that just sounds like you're going back to jail. And then he goes, but I'm going to give you a chance. He said, your bond's going to be set for $10,000, um, secure bond. And, uh, and, and if you can pay it, you can be out. And, um, and so, yeah, and, and I remember him looking at me and he goes, you understand you can't have contact with David. You can't, um, you got to go to pre-trial, this, that, and the other. I, uh, yes, 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 yeah. Get me the fuck out of here. Yes. So uh, after that, we go back and I saw Box again and, and dude, I broke down. I said, dude, I said, I, how the fuck did you know? I said, I said, dude, I said, you were right. That's all I could say. And I went back and I told Michael, I said, I made a deal with God for when I get out of here. I said, and I plan on, on honoring every one of those. And I did. I got out. And before I stepped foot in my house, before I had anything to eat, um, that's a lie. I had a bag of chips. But before I had anything else, man, you know, anything, before I stepped foot in my house and saw my dog, before I saw my sister, before I saw anybody, I walked around for an hour and I counted. I counted down the minutes, walking around everywhere, the entire time thanking God for his creation, what he's done for me. And, uh, yeah, man. So I, I go back to my house and, you know, everything's good. It, it, there is no feeling like getting out of jail and going back to your home. It did nothing like it. Whew. But yeah, man, kind of a long story. Um, but that's how I come to find or have come to find God. I feel like the odds were so fucking stacked against me there. You know, with with the public pretender screwing me over um, the worst judge, uh, you know, my young age with the charges that I had, everything was stacked against me. That was such an uphill battle with weights on my shoulder that, you know, I, I, I truly feel like there was, there was something else at play there. Um, but yeah, man, I, I probably won't tell that story too much. Like I said, that's a very emotional story for me. Um, I, that'll, this will probably be the only live stream where I tell that fucking story. But, uh, but yeah, dude, yeah, that shit was crazy. That shit was crazy. Chill. It's that same kid, bro. The same kid who thinks he has my address. It's fucking husky, bro. <laughs> he keeps making fucking... <laughs> he keeps making accounts, man. That's crazy you remember that name, though. Holy shit. I wish that was the actual Nate. Geez, you spelled his name right, though, I think. I don't, I don't know if that's how you spell his last name, but... If you tell me who your girlfriend was at the time, then I'll believe you. Tell me who your girlfriend was. God, that would blow my fucking mind if you said what her name was. Whew. I'd have some fucking words. This would be a very interesting live stream. But it's not. I, I know it's not that motherfucker. Dennis, what do you want me to explain about black magic? <laughs> Fat Annie. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> What's up, Jeremy? Yeah, Ghost. I'm glad you asked too, man. Matter of fact... I'm going to make you a mod, bro. You need to be around here more often. That was a really thought-provoking fucking question. There you go. But, yeah, Dennis, what do you want me to talk about, man, as far as black magic goes? I've got – I know more – unfortunately, I know more about that stuff than I do uh, Christianity at this point in my life. I know a lot about Christianity, but um, I spent way more of my life practicing the darker side of things. Man, Nate, you got real fucking quiet when I asked you some real information. You got me eating. Easy. Is Zozo a real demon? Yes. Um, Zozo is a real demon. Uh, it's one of the priestesses um, of hell. Uh, she uh, supposedly works alongside with Satan. A lot of people know her as the Ouija board demon. Um, 
I don't know the full story about Zozo. I never really did, was too uh, eager to work with something like that. I do work with a few other entities. And, you know, from the very beginning, I've told you guys what demons I've worked with. There was one called Cameo, Came, um, Amos, uh, who else? Elagos, Elagor. Um, those are both the same ones. I, but I, I, I keep, you know what I mean? I'm never going to give you all bullshit. When, when I talk about things like this, this is all shit from my past, man. I, I know Beelzebub. I never worked with him, um, but I, I had tried to make contact with Beelzebub. I worked with another one named Asmodeus, um, but those are really the only ones I worked with. Uh, I didn't really work with any, any, any other ones. Like, is that witchcraft? You do spells on people. Black magic is witchcraft. Yes, sir. Um, right down to the letter T. Uh, black magic... Honestly, so there's black magic and white magic. Black magic gets a bad rep because it's anything that doesn't help other people, right? So it's anything that furthers your own agenda. Now, that can be for good or bad. You know what I mean? Doing spells to uh, or incantations, whatever the fuck you want to call it, for monetary gain or for women or for whatever the hell you want um, is considered black magic. Uh, but in the same note, Black magic is also putting curses on people and putting hexes on people and working with voodoo dolls. So black magic is a real umbrella term. And there's a really shitty, shitty dark side to black magic that goes all the way into cannibalism and, uh, and sadism and uh, some other really uh, less than honorable things to do. But black magic also has... A lighter side, a gray area, which is working with, you know, monetary gain and, and things like that. Just helping yourself, I guess. What does work with me? Um, as far as working with demons, pretty much my experience as far as what it means to work with a demon was before I made any decisions or um, when I needed counsel, when I needed advice, when I wanted something, when I needed to learn something, uh, I would do either uh, an invocation or an evocation. Uh, now, they're a little bit different. An invocation of a demon is allowing a demon to enter your body, and usually you'll communicate through telepathy. Um, you'll just kind of, they'll speak to you, and you just kind of know what they mean. Um, and then you talk to them through your consciousness, through your, uh, I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain. It gets really deep. Um, but an evocation is pretty much the opposite. You're just summoning something. You want something in the room with you, a presence that you can feel. Um, and a lot of times people refer to this as a cold feeling or uh, like something's watching them or uh, they'll see a shadow or things like this. Um, there's different ways to do it. There's candle magic where you can see things that work with flickering flames um, or smoke or however you want to do it. Uh, there's also scrying mirrors where things will show themselves to you. With, uh, usually they're obsidian. So you'll look into it and you'll see something that's not there. I mean, it's, it gets pretty crazy. But I will say this, a lot of that is also faith. Um, but it's a different kind of faith. It's more of a, an immediate gratification faith. Uh, whereas Christianity was, at the time, what I saw it as was a faith where you just had to wish and hope it happened. With this, it was guaranteed to happen if you knew what you were doing and you put your energy into that. What's up, Harold? Man, you're new here. This is a good stream to start uh, being a part of. I got to go back and look at some of the comments. Like the story? Thanks, Bambi. Good to see you again. I haven't seen you in a long time. As a Christian, can you work with Doubting Thomas or Gabriel? Um... So what do you mean by that? Do you mean, can you work with archangels? Uh, yes, but at the same time in the Bible, it says, you know, God says, do not put any over me. So working with putting a, an angel and, and a lot of that, um, God, I can't remember the name of magic it's called. Uh, Enochian magic usually work can work with angels. Um, I never worked a whole lot with Enochian magic, uh, but I, I've heard it has good results. Um, but that's pretty much just putting an angel over God, uh, which, you know, if you're a Christian is frowned upon. I'm Mexican. So I got a lot of family members who do Santoria. Yeah. Santoria is no joke, man. Yeah. They, they mess a, a lot with, uh, chicken bones and blood and, uh, different things like that. 
Uh, Santeria gets very dirty. Very, very dirty. You should do uh, a cameo on Supernatural TV show. What do you mean? What do you mean, Memphis? Did you know some scholars believe Jesus uh, was anointed in an oil made from nine cannabis tops as an ingredient? I didn't know that. Would you say uh, working with them or are they really leeching from you? A little bit of both. Usually a demon will not present itself to you unless it has a use for you. If it sees I can use this person to further my own agenda, they'll work with you. And they'll give you some of the things you want to keep you on board with them. Um, but and, and all of them are different, man. Some demons, they're known as liars and and treacherous. And some of them aren't. Some of them are actually very educated and... Um, and they, they, I wouldn't say they care about people. None of them fucking like humans. But they, some of them are truthful. Some of them will keep their word and honor their agreements and not twist things to fuck you over. Uh, and some will respect that you're a, you're a being too. Others, you know, um, like I, I could say for, for, you know, for Zozo or um, who are some other fucking assholes? Ball is a, is a good one to work with if you're doing, I, I, I don't want to give you guys advice with that, but. Um, who are some bad ones, man? Um, I can't think of any off the top of my head. There are some that you really just don't fuck with, uh, because only bad happens. There's no working with some of them. Manny, what tat did I get? I got this. Well, that's what I'll do. The next giveaway is going to be for the laptop. So I'll format it. Matter of fact, um, I'll probably clear off everything I have on this and I'll format it. And like I said, I'm not going through USPS. They lost my first package. Uh, so I can't do that again. Um, you know what I mean? I can't, I can't look like I'm sending shit out and it's not getting to where it needs to be. So either I'll just have you come pick it up. I'll meet you somewhere or I'll just get it sent through UPS or something like that. No, I don't want it colored, man. I like it just the way it is. I don't want it colored. Kill porn free. I think you misspelled something there, man. <laughs> I think your autocorrect kind of fucked you there, buddy. <laughs> I'm gonna get back into climbing one of these days. I hope so. Um, like I said, I just got the GoPro back. So I need to go pick up a head mount for it, and we'll definitely be getting back in the climbing. Yeah, this is the place, man. But yeah, man, we've been streaming for about an hour. I don't really want to make this live stream too long. Uh, but yeah, I did want to, uh, I'll probably put a timestamp for where the story began, because Man, that was really emotional for me, man. There was a few points in there that actually almost choked me up a little bit. I don't, I don't know, dude. If I ever see box, box, if you ever see this video, man, please contact me, man. Seriously, I don't. I, I know you probably don't watch fucking YouTube, man. That sucks. I really wish I could talk to him again, man. But shit. But y'all take it easy, man. I really appreciate everybody who stopped by. Um, thank you to everybody who donated. I really appreciate that, Spartan. Thank you so much. And my boy Manny came in. Thank you guys so much. That shit really helps, man. Um, with the porn mat. I'm shaving this shit, man. <laughs> but y'all take it easy. You guys have a wonderful night. Uh, appreciate you guys sticking around and let me know what you guys think of the quality. <laughs>